Please. I'm not allowed? Does my, my journal say anything? No. I have to sign into my own journal. Encyclopedia. The Huldra, which we've... Oh, these are all symbols that I've seen so far. Okay. Let's find out. Well, I mean, what have, have you seen the horse? Yes, I have seen... Well, apparently, according to these sketches, I've seen the horse. Um, the Huldra, I guess, was the doll. And the Night Raven's bird. The Huldra. Skog Skroy... Skroyet? Can't read that. The Huldra is known to have played a part in Norse mythology, but she is likely of an even older origin from when man lived of the forest rather than the fields. The Huldra was the guardian of the forest. She tended to trees, plants, and animals. A single large tree in a grove surrounded by smaller trees was often considered to be the Huldra's home, or even the Huldra herself. In most stories, she presented herself as a beautiful young woman. This was, however, not her real appearance. Very few saw the Huldra's true face, and even fewer lived to speak of it. She was often described as a lonely and woe-filled creature. Her relationship with humans was very complex. She could enthrall a man with her beautiful song and lure him deeper and deeper into the forest where she either wedded or killed him. The men kissed by the Huldra became apathetic and slow. I assume dim-witted. According to some accounts, the Huldra was a positive force. If a hunter was kind to the Huldra, she might blow her breath down the barrel of his rifle which would bless his hunt. That is, hopefully not a euphemism. Collier considered her the... Colliers? C Colliers? Khalees considered her their friend, as she kept fires from spreading from their charcoal kiln. She also helped those who willingly offered their blood to her, but this was dangerous, as the Huldra might drink the giver dry. The Huldra was thus capable of doing both good and bad deeds. It was very hard to predict whether she would help or harm, since she played by rules known only to her. Well, let's read the uh, Boca, uh, Becca Heston, the Brook Horse, because we have that symbol. Also. Oh, he's looking pretty rad. Back at Heston, the brook horse. Sweden is a country that has a lot of lakes, rivers, and streams and brooks, and Swedish folklore is, of course, filled with strange cre creatures residing in the dark waters. The brook horse was a pale horse who lived in creeks or lakes, luring children to ride on its back. The brook's horse spine grew for every rider that it let lured on top of its back, and when the brook horse was satisfied, it leaped into the water, whereupon the children drowned. Hardcore. The brook horse had a lot in common with the Nix, a handsome young fiddler who lured young girls down into the water, and according to some, they were one and the same. It's likely that the brook horse was made up to keep children from playing too close to the water. One of the more unusual descriptions comes from a story told in the north of Dalana. A young man is on his way home from his work at a charcoal kiln. He decides to wash up in a nearby creek. The man finds a strange stone, formed like a small child in the water. He picks it up. The man notices he isn't alone. He's being watched by a horse walking on two legs. The horse stretches out a human hand to the man, who gets frightened and runs home to a shack he shares with his fellow workers. He tells the, the tale to his comrades, who laugh at him and call him a drunken fool. He shows them the stone that now looks quite ordinary. The man curses and goes to bed. When the workers wake up the following morning, they find the man dead in his bed, his lungs filled with water, and the stone nowhere to be seen. The brook horse was almost always closely associated with death, not always in a negative way. For instance, in the sad folktale Lily Nils, the brook horse is the one who finally leads little Nils' soul home and thus ends his long series of misfortunes. These are really creepy. What, the Swedish have got nothing better to do than terrify people with their folklore. This is quite good. The Nartratnen, the Night Raven. He's like crying a little. Don't be sad. Carrion birds were deeply linked with misfortune and death in Scandinavian folklore. The Night Raven, or Nartratnen, was certainly no exception. The Night Raven was described as a large bird with a sharp beak, sometimes with holes in its wings. Speed holes. Most certainly. If a person gazed through these holes, he would become ill. Other stories told of a giant skeletal bird that could never satisfy its hunger. Travelers foolish enough to be out at night risk being devoured by the terrible bird, especially at festival days such as Christmas or New Year's Eve. 
The Night Raven has also been described as an ordinary raven, but if it landed on a house, someone would die shortly with a terrible fever. Overall, the Night Raven was strongly associated with disease. When farmers sent their children out to collect wild birds' eggs, they had to be careful that they did not pick the eggs of the Night Raven. Those eggs were considered deadly, but if the child was unsure, he could knock on the egg three times and say, Out with the evil spirit. If the egg belonged to the Night Raven, it would turn black. The Night Raven not only infested the eggs, it also possessed birds, preferably carrion birds. According to some sources, the Night Raven was a spirit of an evil, greedy man who had not been buried properly. The greed manifested itself in the Night Raven's fondness for shiny objects. Okay, so those are the three symbols we've found. And we'll see the Miling and the Church Grim once we also see those symbols. Which I assume is getting very close, because I can see it on the sign there, but this is the cemetery bounds. And we can't actually press through the gate, so we do need the key first. But overall, Swedish folklore is apparently absolutely terrifying. Very, it's very uh, bitter, a lot of the folklore. I mean, this is a, supposed to be a creepy game, so of course it's gonna, it's gonna have that edge, but a lot of the folklore comes from scaring the ever-living shit out of kids. And, I mean, kids are really easily impressed. I don't know why you need to make up something so horrifying that even adults would would be afraid, but... I don't know. Here we are. <laughs> great... Oh, here we go. There's another rune. Let's, let's draw this one, shall we? That one was easy. All right, great. Oh, is there any hints here? Oh, the whole draw part two. Part two? Uh, what's, what's part one? Oh, yeah, we unlocked her. Okay, what's the hint? She holds the key. Follow her song. Oh! You can actually hear it in the background. Oh, that's very, very cool. Is it getting louder? I, I, I can't really hear it now. Well, she's not in there. That's just an effigy. Well, I thought I heard it coming from the right part of the map, but I'm just not sure it's the map here. Okay, let's head down to the rune. We'll head past the rune zone. We'll try and get some somewhat centered so I can get that back. So I can center myself. Oh, here we go. Look. It's an actual rune stone with the grim on top. And I've got two, rune, two runes written down. Oh. She's real close. Is she going to jump me? It's really loud just here. This is unbelievably atmospheric. This is great. Very haunting. Oh, another rune. Oh, I've got this one. I can't tell if this like a, it's a natural change in volume or not. Hello. Huh. Okay, well, I'll just leave that safe open. Like nobody was ever here. Let's say safe home. Rasmussen's Kalku... Kalkun? Kalkun? Whatever. Alright. I wonder if she's near the cottage. Let's investigate. She's gotta be... Is that a pond? It's like a rug. Who keeps a rug out here in the forest? Getting close, getting close, getting... Yes! Okay. She's creepy. Hello. What? I can drag her around? What? I don't have to take her to the cemetery, surely. <laughs> oh, actually, yes. That would make sense. Okay, let's check the map before I drag her everywhere. Fastest way is... Okay. Straight up from here. Right, left. Uh... Okay, well, we can only go one place here. As long as we keep going up, though. I don't have her. Where is she? Wait. You coming with me? Do I have to grab her by the head? That was a bit weird. Okay, well, there she is. Oh, it was this way, wasn't it? Was it this way? 
Am I following her or is she following me? <laughs> I think I think uh, it was just a coincidence that um Is she? Is she going that way? Yes, okay, so she's leading me. It's just a coincidence. I thought I was dragging her. Just by the hair, caveman style. Back to my cave. So we pick up ladies back in the old days. Okay. I'm expecting to get jumped. She's just gonna turn on me at the last second. Uh, what the hell? Okay. Oh! Hello? Oh, this is the dead trees that I was- Oh, cool. Oh, she pointed before. Okay, so what did she say? She said left, right, left, right, right, right. Cool. Hooray. What vision of the future are we being given by the owls and the Huldra? This is a very grim vision of the future. Where the shit am I? Are we still in... Are we still in, inside the dead tree? Alright. Oop. I was just gonna follow her a little bit more. What is going on? <laughs> no. I'm not gonna keep following you. Oh, what? I am no good with music. This is gonna take forever. Forever for me to figure out. Alright, well, we'll pause it here. And I'm gonna go figure out how the hell to do this because I am really terrible with music. And then we'll figure out the Huldra song and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back with the music puzzle. I still don't know. I still don't know what to do. I think there's some harmonious... Harmonious singing. Oh god, that sounds awful. The background chimes. That sounded alright. Alright. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Oh, okay, it's not, it's not so terrible. It seems that the, um, there's ch the chimes, those bells in the background that sort of indicate what we're supposed to do. And they keep changing in pitch. Oh, that is, that is just so bad. Okay, let's see. Is this, please? Okay. I don't know if these are all of the bells, though. Also... Um, the Huldra, the blood drinker, was supposed to be represented by that little doll. And she did have a bloody mouth as she spun around. Very creepy. What is this music? I don't know if there were still five. What? One more. How many are there? I don't want to have to do this again. No. All those years of tuning a guitar for nothing. I should have been able to do this by now. No. I'm gonna say this one. And God help me. Fuck! <laughs> Alright, let's try again. Okay, so we're back onto the last one. Well, I think it's the last one. I've hit four. Um, 
Let's go with this. Let's see. Hopefully. Oh, ha. Huh. Thank you. Hi, Huldra. How's it going? I got through your Banshee's song, leading me deeper into the forest with your cries. There she is. Very, very creepy. There's the jump scare. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, man. See, they told you she was gonna do that, didn't they? She was gonna eat my face. And my blood feeds the dead tree. Lovely. Oh, and I have the key. Extra great. So now we gotta head to the cemetery. Oh yeah, I'll take that. Thanks, mate. As it. Well, that's that's not good. That's ice now. All right. So the next stop will be the cemetery. <laughs>